This is a Celestron Altazimuth mount with slow-mo gears. Um, I'm going to show you how to adjust it so that you can skew your telescope with just one finger of force um, when you're you know, pointing to a new spot and these gears work nice and smooth to adjust fine motion control. Hopefully it came like this from the factory, but if not, you'll have to loosen and tighten some nuts in here to get things working the way you'd like. So these are the tools you're going to need. Um, some type of plastic pry bar or scraper to pop off the plastic covers without damaging them. Um, you're going to need a 16 millimeter wrench or socket to do the nuts that have thread locker on them just to hold it so that you can tighten and loosen the other side. And then you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket and you really do need a socket. I mean you could take a 17 millimeter wrench and kind of you know turn it like this, um, but it's not going to be very easy. So you, you really do want the 7 mm, 17 millimeter socket. Now if you don't have metric, um, an 11 16 socket works okay. It fits all right. It, it turns things around. And a 5 8 wrench or socket can substitute for this 16 here. So you know 5 8 and 11 16 or ideally a 17 millimeter and a 16 millimeter. Now, when you have it apart, you may be tempted to lube it, so if you do that, you'll want some synthetic grease and, you know, a toothpick and Q-tip to apply that. Now, sometimes from the factory, it's a little stiff, so you can see here, I have to really put a lot of force into that to turn it. Um, and sometimes, these slow-mo mounts won't turn it very effectively. So I'm going to take it apart, lube it, put it back together, just tight enough so that it'll be easy to move around. This guy has a CG5 dovetail mount. It's kind of Vixen styled. These main nuts here are 17 millimeter. There's one there and then one on the bottom down here. Underneath these black plastic covers, they pry off. They are held in by two plastic pins and a little bit of kind of rubber cementish adhesive. So those are the two pins there. And just to keep things interesting, these nuts underneath the plastic covers, instead of being a 17 millimeter, are a 16 millimeter. Um, however, you don't need a socket, just a, a standard box end wrench can hold these guys. There is some red here, so these guys have been thread locked onto there. Mostly you just have to hold this so that you can tighten and loosen the nut on the other side without the whole thing spinning. So if you don't have a 16 millimeter, a 5 8 works pretty good on these guys. So I'm using a 16 millimeter to hold the other side, and then here's a socket. Ideally it would be a 17 millimeter. I'm using an 11 16 to loosen this guy. And if you just loosen it a little bit, this guy will start spinning really well. So you can tighten this up to be exactly enough to hold your scope um, and still make it easy to move. Or if you want to lube the thing, you can take it all the way off, which is what I'm going to be doing. So this is a nylon lock nut. And a washer. Don't lose the washer. And here you can see the slow motion gear train. I just have a worm gear in the bottom that spins this guy around. And it's just friction clutched here with this guy to the actual um, kind of Vixen mount. So this bolt basically has a shoulder shaft that the gear will spin around, but the bolt, which is hooked up to the um, dovetail mount, actually spins inside the gear. So the only connection between the gear and the dovetail mount is through this slippery piece of cardboard here, and so it is just a, a friction clutch. And so how tight you adjust that basically says how easy it is to move the scope without turning this gear. So you can just pull this gear out, and if you do, you can see there's a ring of black plastic here. That gear spins against the ring, um, and that ring is basically what pushes the gear against this little slippery piece of cardboard, which is how the gear turns by friction this dovetail mount. Um, so since I have this out, you can also see, if you look carefully, there's a small ring of wear, and that's the side that goes in, and there's a larger ring of wear, and that's the side that faces this little piece of cardboard. Um, so since I have this apart, I'm going to put a little bit of lube on that black plastic ring, and then put this back in. I'm not going to put lube on the side that touches this cardboard. 
I'm using this Superlube Synthetic Grease with PTFE and a Q-tip to get it on this guy. Now the manufacturer has clearly put some lube on this gear and they did it in two spots it looks like and they're just counting on that worm drive to move that lube around. I'm going to go ahead and put lube in two other spots so that you know keep you know re-lubing even if you don't do a full 180 to get to all those spots. Now when reinstalling the dovetail with this little cardboard spacer, I'm laying this down on the floor because there's really nothing that sticks this in place and holds it in here. There is a retaining ring there, so either I could put this thing here and drop that guy on top of it, I'm worried the gear would fall off, or I can set it down like this and kind of keep it in place as I set her down. And the dovetail is not linked up to the bolt, so it can spin around the bolt. And because of that, I'm going to put a little bit of lube on this washer that goes between the dovetail and the nut. Um, the whole purpose of this washer is to hold the thing in compression against the gear and to keep it from just spinning freely. Um, but when you move the scope, either the bolt turns or the V-groove turns around the bolt, um, and depending on how much pressure you have and you know how, how much friction the bolt has determines which happens there. Um, so I figure I might as well make it easy for this thing to swivel around the bolt if necessary. And I'm going to tighten this enough to hold that little cardboard washer um, in place. All right, that's probably not tight enough to hold your telescope, but it's a good spot to uh, hold that washer. Now on the outside, there's this nut that's held on with thread locker compound. And behind that, there's a rubber gasket to give a little compression, kind of like a spring, and a metal washer. So when you turn the dovetail, that nut might go with it. But if you're holding on to it, the dovetail turns without moving it. So now it's just a matter of adjusting this to taste. Um, obviously right now if you look at that dovetail it wiggles so it's not tight enough. Um, even that Super Lucy you can see that the slow-mo gear drive will turn that guy um, and I can easily turn it by hand and so obviously your scope would have to be exceptionally well balanced for that to work so you know that's that's a little loose. Um, but basically we just have to tighten it up until it feels right and then put the scope on and try it out with the scope. So gee, I just did a quarter turn there and now I can't turn this by hand without the leverage of the scope. I, I can there but it's quite difficult to turn by hand without the leverage of the scope. So I'm going to give that a shot. I'm going to put my scope on and feel how it turns. Alright, so with the optical tube on there, it's relatively easy to turn and you can see the slow motion control works just fine. I'm going to loosen it just slightly because it's not falling down at all and it's not like I can push on this with just one finger and easily turn it. So I'm going to back it off just a little bit. Just a tiny bit of a turn there. Okay, I have that tuned where I like it. Um, you know, I can use one finger to move the scope around and the um, slow motion gears work fine here. Now if your scope is not well balanced, or if you tend to put you know heavy eyepieces on or something else on and off, you might want it a little tighter than I have it here. But I like it to be you know real easy to move. Now the azimuth mount works in exactly the same way; it's just tilted horizontally. Um, I'm you know the, moving it is pretty easy here. I'm running into a problem where when I turn the slow motion gears, it'll move this way but in the other direction, it doesn't want to move the other direction. Now, if I twist it really fast, it'll make jerks and starts there. So I think I might actually need to tighten this up. We're going to open it up, see what's going on. Um, hopefully the gears aren't broken, or teeth aren't broken off the gears. But right now, my slow motion gear train isn't turning this as nicely as I would like. Now, before I take this cap off, 
I'm going to try tightening this guy um, just from the bottom here and hope that this gear or the, hope, hope that the nut on the top will just hold. Whew. Boy, that feels like it was already pretty tight. I'm not certain if that tightened things up much. I'm worried it might just be spinning this. I'm going to take the cap off so I can hold the top. For prying these little plastic covers off, you could use a screwdriver, but I like these um, guitar pick kind of cell phone sponger tools um, because they're plastic and they're less likely to mess up the plastic of the uh, cap. Although I'm breaking my sponger tool, but that's okay because it's a sacrificial tool. And keep in mind there's two pins in here, so our goal is to lift this straight up so we don't break the pins off. And it looks like one of them's in the front here and one's in the back where I can't get easy access to it. So I'm kind of just torquing from the side now. There we go. All right, yeah, so we got one there and one there. All right, I was trying to tighten this guy up and it was taking a lot of effort to turn. But I think the top nut here might have been turning. Well, I don't see it turning there. No, it doesn't appear to be turning. Let's see. It's getting a little bit harder to turn. This guy isn't working any better. So I think I'm going to have to take it apart and look inside. Okay, so off the bottom came the nylon locking nut and this washer. Now this guy on top was a little bit tight, so I had to wiggle it back and forth, but then I got to the point where I could lift it up. and not drop any of these things out. So you can see it's very similar to the one on the side. Um, it has this little cardboardy friction disc, the gear, gear train, and so forth. Um, I'm going to rotate this around, just check all those gear teeth. It looks like it's working just fine. Um, so I think I may need to adjust this nut on this guy, because that's pretty loose. And the nut on the bottom, I tightened pretty much all the way down, um, and it didn't seem to pull this into that gear enough. Um, so you can see that the main difference here is that I think this guy might need to be tightened up to make this work the way I want it to. Since I had this guy apart, I figured I'd lube it up a little bit. This gear train actually has, looks like, one, two, three spots that they put the grease on. Um, and this little plastic disc, which sits in there, actually came off attached to the gear just with a little bit of surface tension of lube there. So I'm going to put some lube on that black disc and maybe a little bit on the gears and then put this thing back together and worry about tightening things up. All right, I'm using gravity to hold this little cardboard disc in there. I'm going to hold the gear in place here as I set this thing back down on top of things. Put a little bit of lube on both sides of that washer, and I'm going to be using my socket to put everything up in place there because it's hard to access with your fingers.
So I'm taking this guy apart and this nut on that shaft there is very loosey-goosey, much more so than the other one. Um, and the thread locker compound has been broken on it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that all the way off. I'm going to lube up in here and I'm going to tighten it on tighter than it is now because I believe I need more play to use the bottom nut to pull this gear against the friction clutch there um, to make it turn well. Okay, I tightened the bottom nut and then I tightened this top nut down. Um, it was broken off the thread locker so it was a little loose and now this guy is quite sturdy and I can still turn it easily by hand and when I use the slow motion gears it goes both directions very nicely. So I'm going to drop just a little bit of thread locker back on here so this guy doesn't come off because that is not a nylon lock, lock, not lock nut. Um, so I'm just going to put some thread locker around those threads to keep it where it is right now. And ideally, you would have put this on the threads before you put it down. But, I'm just going to let it soak in there and hope enough soaks in to make things work. All we have to do now is put these caps back on. If you have some rubber cement, you might put some rubber cement on these pins. Um, this bottom one I'm not too worried about. I think gravity is going to hold that on just fine. Um, and there is a pretty good amount of friction there from those pins going in. Um, so you probably don't need the rubber cement. And just as a tip and trick for this mount, there is a little hex key that is hidden right there. And that hex key is used for um, installing and removing your slow-mo um, handles if you want to do that for some reason. So it's just stored right in there. Also, underneath this cover, there's some screws where you can take this arm and rotate it. It's set up pretty well for viewing stars right now, but if you're doing terrestrial objects and you need to look down, for example, you might pop it up to give your telescope a little more view below the horizon. I'm really happy with how this turned out. You know, as you can see, I can just use one finger to move this scope around. And for me, the big reason I did this is that this gear wasn't working well in one direction. And so now you can see it works very nicely in both directions. So I have the slow-mo gears working and I have it nicely balanced and, you know, the right amount of resistance so it doesn't move on its own, but still very easy to move around as I want to. I put some lubricant in there while I was doing it because I had everything apart. I don't really think you need to do that. I think simply tightening and loosening those nuts on either side um, without fully disassembling it will probably be able to get you most of the way to what I have here. So I would say do that first um, and then only take it apart if you find that you need extra lubricant.